I'm New Center Maine meteorologist Jason Nappy. I want to talk about the winter of 2023 and 24 so far. Uh, and obviously what happened the most recent was the storm that came through on Saturday on the weekend. The Wheeler checks nearly 100 years. They stood and now they have gone into the ocean. Thanks, Dan, for sending this in. Uh, I'll talk about inland runners. People have been asking me, what is an inland runner? What kind of a track is that and what does it mean? So that's really what the uh, kind of the topic I'm going to tackle in this kind of explainer video here is this is already a record season and we are not even half done with winter yet. So let's get right into it. What's an inland runner? Well, normally this is not an inland runner. This normally you get this nor'easter track, which rides along the coast or just off the coast, right? But with an inland runner, what happens is the track is going to go inland. It's going to kind of hook inland. So I'll show you that now. Here's that track where low pressure really starts to take over. Primary and dominant low is going to be inland. So that's an inland track. And what happens with that is it's going to pull all of the moisture out in front of it. Okay, so let's talk about this is January 9th. Go back in time a little bit to January 10th. Here's that inland runner track where it goes in, pulls that moisture, pulls the wind and the waves inland. That was the 10th. And then fast forward to just Saturday, just yesterday. Here's the back to back inland runners. Another one. This one parked over eastern Canada. You have the occluded frontier, warm front and cold front. Occluded front, fancy word and terminology for a cold front that catches up with the warm front right there. And you had the wind out of the southeast. OK, you were in that warm sector. We were for a good chunk of your Saturday kind of morning and then even for midday before the front pushed through. So let's talk about that. Why were there record high water levels? Well, when you have that system over here, the inland runner and you have the occluded front, you've got all of the wave action, all of the wind in a very bad worst case scenario position for us here in Maine along the coastlines where all of that water gets pushed up because you see the way the main coastline is situated here where a southeast wind versus a northeast wind. If it was a nor'easter, a southeast wind is what drives all of that water up to the coastline. So here we go. Preliminary, but these are very close to what I think what is going to be the final number. Let's talk about it in Bar Harbor. 15.81 feet. That's first all time for a water level. Cutler 18.89 first all time. In Bangor, how about second all time? Callis second all time. Eastport fourth all time. Now it's a combination of Wednesday and Saturday. Okay, I mixed in there, but still, these numbers never seen before for observed water levels at the gauges. In Portland, all time, which 14.57 right around the high tide of 1205, which beats the blizzard of 78. And the people I talked to down in Dock Square um, in Kenny Bunkport say that what they saw in the southern coast region, southern coast region was the highest water levels that they've seen in their entire lifetimes. People that are more than 70 years old, people that have experienced obviously the blizzard of 78 about 50 years ago. So what happened was picture here's the park bench. Here's your mean sea level. So let's say Portland is 10 feet above sea level, right? Your mean sea level. Then you get the tide to come in. The anomaly is on top of that. OK, so the anomaly would be like the king tide, the highest tide of the month. And then here's your surge. Now, in this case, for us, the surge was not this high. It was more like the tide was high. You get the idea, though. A few feet of surge on top of the predicted tide gives you the storm tide. So the surge is an abnormal rise of water generated by the storm, hence the Wednesday and Saturday storms. And that's over and above the predicted tide, which I just showed you, which was, for example, in Portland, you get I'm talking about 10, 11, 12 feet. And then storm tide is that total observed seawater level during the storm. So at the peak of the storm during the high tide and storm tide results from the combination of surge and tide. So this is what happened. It's just one video. Thank you for sending in all of the videos. We've got tons of coverage on our website. Uh, the fishing community and people on the coastline are going to be spending days, weeks, months, probably even years to clean up from these inland runners as they pushed inland and brought all of that tide and that surge and the storms to the worst possible place back to back. And one of this last thing I'll leave you with the reason why the second storm, which was not as strong millibar wise, 
did as much damage as it did is because the natural barriers along the dunes and the flood protection were just pulled away. So that's why the second back-to-back -back didn't have time to recover. I thank you for watching. Check out the blog on newscentermain.com, and I'll see you next time.